Okay. Welcome back. Uh, this is reversing entries. And uh, we're going to cover what you reverse and what you don't reverse. Not all re entries that you make as adjustments are reversed, but some of them can be. And uh, there's two types of reversing entries that you do, that you reverse. Adjusting entries that establish accrued revenue or expenses to be paid in the next accounting period. So if you set up one that starts increasing interest receivables or that type of thing, under revenue, those would be reversed as long as it's paid next period. Adjusting entries related to prepayments initially recorded as an expense are also reversed. Okay, You do not reverse these two types of entries. Adjusting entries for the prepayment if it was recorded initially as, a as an asset or liability or estimated items such as depreciation, bad debts, and income tax. Now, a lot of people don't realize income tax is an estimate, but if you think about it, it really is because what goes into making up of the income tax expense or income tax payable? Well, you have depreciation on your income statement. That's an estimate. Bad debt expense. That's an estimate. Warranty expense. That's an estimate. Well, those things that are estimates, then income your income has to be an estimate, so your income tax has to be an estimate. So that's why you don't reverse that one either. Okay, now the ones we did, uh, the company purchased one year for $18,000 October 1st. Remember, this was our initial entries, and we want to look at if we reverse them or not. Okay, I forgot to mark that out. Okay. Well, the rules are, if you look at this side here, we increased an asset to start with. Okay. Uh, prepaid, in, it was initially recorded as an asset. Well, if you look at what it says, do not reverse adjusting entries for prepayments initially recorded as an asset. Well, this was initially recorded as an asset, so this one therefore has no reversing entry. Okay, so you don't do anything on that side. On this one, however, this was initially recorded as an expense. Okay, adjust entries for prepayments initially recorded as an expense. Well, this one will be reversed then. So the reversing entry is simply just that. You take your debit, the credit becomes the debit, and the debit becomes the credit, and it's for the same dollar amount. And that's your reverse entry. Now, the reason why this puts it back into the insurance expense account. Remember, you have closing entries in between here. And the closing entries then wipes out the insurance expense that you have in there. And you take prepaid insurance back to zero and you put this back at 13.5. Okay, the next one we have uh, was the unearned revenue account. Well, this was initially recorded as a liability. So therefore, because of the rule, this would have no adjust, no reversing entry. Okay, so we don't reverse that side. This one was initially recorded as a revenue. Well, that's that second rule again. Prepayment recorded as a revenue. So this one will be reversed. So the under revenue becomes the debit, and the credit is the revenue account for four thousand dollars. Now the reason why this year it's one year, it has to be less than one year, and so this year we put the revenue subscriptions back at four thousand dollars, which is the amount we have to record we want to record anyway. Okay. Now don't get thinking just because it's on this side you record it because this is one um, ABC company borrowed ten thousand dollars. Okay. We had initially recorded interest the entry is interest expense, interest payable well, that increases the liability. Okay, adjust an interest that establish accrued revenue or expenses. Well, that establish an accrued revenue or expense. Okay, the accrued revenue was interest income. Therefore, that one will be. It also, it, yeah, that one will be reversed. Oops the wrong button there. Okay, for 675. <laughs> I have it over here already. 
forgot to delete that one because it's the same entry. So, okay. Um, equipment. There's our last example that we had. Well, equipment would be no reversing entry. Because it was the depreciation is an estimate. So there is no reversing entry on that one. Okay. So this will give you a quick, quick review of it. Basically what it comes down to an easy way of remembering this. I know this is a there's a lot of there's four different things here. But most of them what these if you increase an asset or increase a liability and it's due within one year that's not an estimate, you may reverse it. And that's probably the easy way of doing that. So um, hopefully that will help a little bit as they're trying to remember these four rules. That gives you a quick example of what you reverse and what you don't reverse. And it looks like I missed one here, interest payable. <laughs> I did, good thing I scrolled down. Um, this one increases the liability. Okay, so you would reverse that one also. Um, And that's for the hundred dollars, and that would be on both sides. That it's reversed. Remember, the debits become credits, and the credit becomes a debit, and that's for one hundred dollars. Now, a lot of people have trouble with this, so let's go through. Let's just do this one right here because this is the one that really causes problems a lot of times. How that works, and how does that reverse entry work? Okay. Well, if we make a very quick T account, um, hopefully a couple won't be too long. Sometimes the machine's a little slower than normal. Um, okay, there it comes. Borders and T accounts. I want the center. I always make a double T, and I make this for um, interest P A Y E. E payable. Okay, and this, this is for this is actually to make things easier for us. Okay, and then I also want I'll do the same type of thing. I'll just make a quick one. Uh, copy. I'll put it right here and paste it. And I'll make this one for um, the expense expense account. Okay. Now for the um, Adjusting entry, adjusting entry, and interest payable. We put in one hundred dollars. Okay, and interest expense. We put a debit in there for one hundred dollars. Okay, so that's what we want in there. Now, on the for the closing entries, that's for the adjustment. The closing entries, we also put a credit in here for $100. Okay, and we'll label this. This is the adjustment, and this one is closing. Okay, then for the reverse, that gives us a zero balance, sorry. Then for the reversing entry, though, okay, we'll also put in $100, and that gives me. A credit balance of 100. Now you probably think, okay, why do we want a credit balance in here? Well, let's look at this. When we paid this um, about in November, when we paid this interest, well, we would have you'd have the 10,000 times that was for 0.06. And it would be for 10 twelfths of the year. Okay. So what you'd have in there is $600, which gives you 500 in the account. Okay. If you did it the way the interest payable, your initial entry would, your adjusting entry would have been to the, um, well, you need interest payable and interest expense. Then on November 1st of 17, 
what you would have had then, nor what if you without the adjusting entry, you would had notes payable for the ten thousand interest payable would have been for the one hundred interest expense would have been for the 500 because you said okay and then you would have had a cut it to cash for 10,600 okay this is without reversing okay with the reversing entry on 11 1 of 17 we have Notes payable for the ten thousand interest expense is for the entire six hundred, you don't have to separate it, and cash is for the ten thousand six hundred. Okay, now it looks like you put six hundred dollars too much in here, but if you go back up here to what we did. It still shows 500, which is what we have here. So that gives you an idea why we, why we use reversing entries. You don't have to keep track of how much you recorded last year and how much of it goes into this year. And it makes life a little bit easier for you to keep track of. Okay, so I hope that helps. And um, I guess I'll you'll wait till next time we do videos.